we got a Mac operating system, old El Capitan up there, and down there is a custom built uh, PC. Uh, so I got myself a Hackintosh. Uh, this was um, a long, arduous uh, task, uh, basically because I had uh, two things in mind. One thing I wanted to build a badass system, which I did. Uh, the other thing too is I wanted to do a video that was uh, easy for everybody to understand. Alright, so we're booted up into Mac. We're ready to go. Alright, so I was trying to uh, use this uh, screen capture recorder. It was awful. It was buggy as all can be. So let's go ahead and get everything working. Um, as you can see, iMessage doesn't work. Um, it's just this default resolution right now. So we need to get the web drivers installed. We need to get the Kex installed. We need to get Clover Configurator installed. Blah, 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 blah. So let's go ahead and I'm going to open a new Finder window so we can start getting stuff installed. Alright. Clover Configurator, okay. Drag that in your Applications folder. Multi Beast. Put that in your toolbox. All right, let me get rid of you. These guys are easy kicks. This one, okay. Um, and. Let's go ahead and install these drivers. Again, everything will be... Now, the link will be in the description for these web drivers. You need to go ahead and download them to a USB beforehand. All right, what I want, while this is doing its thing, it's going to require a restart, but we're not going to restart it yet. So right now, I want you to go ahead and open Clover Configurator. Oh. Sorry about that. I'm trying to open Clover Configurator here, and you need to go into Security. You need to click. You type in your password, and then uh, allow apps downloaded from anywhere, allow from anywhere. Okay. And now open Clover Configurator. Yes. All right. So now we're going to mount the EFI partition. Mount it. Okay. Choose the right one. There it is. All right, so now we need to go ahead and change our config file. So after you've got uh, Clover Configurator to open up uh, or mount your EFI partition, what I want you to do is to go into your EFI partition, Clover, and you're going to get this final Clover, and you're going to highlight everything, and you're going to drag it in there and replace it all. All right, so that's rocking your Kex. Um, so we're going to head and go and open Easy Kex. Here we go. All right, let's go ahead and drag these in there. All right, they're processing them. All right, we're good. Now we're going to do two more things. We're going to update our config file, and then we're going to run MultiBeast. All right, real quick, because um, I did this right after I installed the system and my graphics card wasn't working, so I did it with my camera holding it at the monitor, and it didn't really work out so well. You couldn't see what I was doing. so. Um, when we're altering our config file to have our boot arguments and the way we want things set up so we can go ahead and boot up without farting with all that stuff, um, go ahead and open Clover Configurator. Wherever I put it here. Okay, I'm going to mount EFI partition. Mount it. Okay, and then we're going to open EFI. And then, so it's right there. So. Now what I want to do is go to Clover, and then now because I have Xcode, so you're going to need to go to the App Store and download Xcode, but because I have Xcode downloaded right here, I'm going to double click this, and if it doesn't open with Xcode, just uh, right click and hit open with Xcode, but I already got it to default to it. So I'm going to open with it, and so what I want you to do is go to boot, and make sure the, the boot arguments are for, well for me at least and for you if you have a NVIDIA graphics card will be NVDA underscore DRV equals one that means I have the drivers downloaded and installed 
go ahead and start using them uh, instead of NV underscore disable equals one, which means um, basically don't use NVIDIA web drivers. So there was also some other ones in here called Dart equals zero and dash V, which is verbose mode. Um, so you can delete those out of there. You don't need those anymore. And then just stick with this one only. And if you have more than one, you separate them by a space. Last thing, just make sure you go to uh, graphics inject and in NVIDIA, it's no. You don't want to inject NVIDIA anymore. After that, you file, you save, you close out of this, and then you're good to go. What is it? What is it? What does it do? Um, basically, what it does is it writes in your system, in your config files or your system uh, files, whatever, it says what your computer is. You're saying, I'm an iMac, I'm a Mac Pro, uh, what year it is. Uh, all that good stuff. You're saying, hey, I have the 100 series board. I need 100 series audio, um, uh, stuff like that. So, um, but don't just go start clicking everything and thinking that you're going to, uh, you know, get lucky because you could cause a, a, a kernel panic attack and, and screw yourself up. Uh, like I was saying, just keep it simple, um, you know, with your U, uh, EFI boot mode, which is usually what you should be in. Um, uh, your drivers, uh, all I picked was just the, the 100 series audio and I picked this uh, Voodoo HDA uh, version 2.8.6. For some reason these two didn't work, uh, but this works for my optical audio cable going to my Samsung TV. So uh, that was handy dandy. Um, I didn't pick any of these. Uh, I didn't pick any of these. Didn't pick any of those. And uh, the only thing I picked here was uh, increased max port limit. Um, bootloaders, I didn't touch this because it's already in UEFI. And then this is your most important part. It's huge. Um, first of all, for graphics configuration, um, I did not choose to inject NVIDIA because I'm using the current um, web drivers that I had already installed. Um, so that's why I have the boot flag NVDA uh, underscore DRV equals one. But then down here is the most important part, right here, system definitions. You need to pick the system that is the closest to your system and see if it works. Um, I guess that's what they say is pick the system that's the closest to yours and stuff like that. But I, the system that's closest to mine is actually the iMac 17.1. Pick that, didn't work. I went with the uh, iMac 16.2. It worked for a little bit, then went black screen on me. Um, but if you look in uh, multiple uh, threads, these two, 14.1, 14.2, happen to be the most compatible. I go with 14.2. Uh, it is the most compatible and lets me operate. The downside to this is for this iMac, I forget what year it was, but it doesn't have uh, continuity and handoff. So you need a newer iMac or I think the newer Mac Pro, which this one's very incompatible. So um, good luck with it. I, I would just say get rocking and rolling with a compatible um, version of, of whatever uh, and then uh, when you get your system built and you get things right you do a time machine backup get everything set just right and then uh, do a backup of your config file as well and then you can start playing around with these because it could uh, send you into uh, a kernel panic attack or it could also just give you a black screen which means you'll just have to put nv underscore disable equals one and just to get to the the screen and then you'll end up changing it back to your compatible whatever. So that's the explanation behind MultiBeast. And then you click build, install, install it to the right hard drive and then you would need to reboot uh, before anything is even usable. Uh, let's see what it comes up to just so you can see what it looks like. So, so as you can see here's my Clover boot screen and uh, if you can see, there's Windows and then there's Mac. Because like I said, I have a Windows uh, solid state drive and a Mac. So if I wanted Mac, you've obviously seen that boot up. But if I wanted Windows, I hit Enter. Oops, hit Shift. And boom, there's Windows. So I got a dual boot system. Works out pretty good. All right, well, that was my video. I hope you liked it. Um, um, what you could do for me after all this um, is like, subscribe, comment, do all that good stuff. And uh, also in the comments, uh, let me know what you want to see in the future. Tell me uh, if there's a video you would like me to make. 
um, if there's an app review you would like me to do, and uh, just, just let me know. So uh, I appreciate everybody for watching. Uh, I'm really excited about my Hagintosh. Hopefully you're going to get one soon and be excited about it as well.